Hello and welcome to the second week of our Advent calendar and this week our theme is watching as we go through the uh, larger theme of waiting in hope for Advent and I'm joined today for my conversation by Suzanne Knockles. Now Suzanne and I met many years ago when we were both undergraduates at King's and in fact she was the first person I met at King's as I we were both queuing up for our library cards in the King's College uh, library. Suzanne, do you want to um, say hello and tell people a little bit about who you are and what your job is? Hello, everyone. Uh, it's really great to join you. Um, I'm a, a congregational church minister of two churches in Sheffield. So you might recognise a bit of a, a, a sort of Sheffield icon in the picture behind me. Uh, it's hence as relish, not Worcester sauce. Um, and I'm uh, president-elect for all the congregational churches in the country this year, hoping to become president in May. So that's me. And for those who may not know much about the congregational church being a fairly small denomination, we had a, we had a lecturer at university that used to accuse Suzanne regularly of belonging to the URC church, which is no bad thing, but there is a subtle difference. Do you want to just say a little bit about the congregational church? Right, so yeah, we hail from the Reformation. Uh, we go way, way back. I'm, I'm arrogant enough to think that our pattern of being church is there in the New Testament as well. Um, and it's <clears throat> it's church really by, <clears throat> by spiritual consensus. So uh, we meet as a whole body of people. We have meetings, um, usually monthly, although not this year, as a whole body of people, and we make all our decisions together. Uh, occasionally it might go as far as a vote but we kind of see that as a failure really if it does uh, we kind of want to make the decisions um, united so that will be everything from calling church leaders and ministers to what we're going to do at Christmas to what we're doing with, with our building to big theological things as well um, and, and big uh, decisions about sort of the future direction of the church so that congregational uh, is run by the congregation uh, and it's as, as simple as that. Brilliant. So you have your own <laughs> congregation units and then it's the federation of those congregational churches that that is what you will be. Yeah, we're all locally independent, but we federate together for those things that we can't do easily by ourselves, like training and uh, sort of national safeguarding and things like that. Brilliant. Well, thank you for that. I'm sure that's answered questions for a few people that may have been <laughs> uncertain. Um, so watching, I, I picked on Suzanne for this conversation because, uh, well, as you can see, partly on the wall behind her, she has an interest in art and has been involved in lots of creative things over the years. Um, and I just really wanted to pick up on this key theme of Advent. Um, I was showing Suzanne just before we started talking the little booklet that we've um, been looking at. And the verse for this uh, week is from 1 Corinthians 16, verse 13. Keep alert, stand firm in your faith, be courageous, be strong. So I don't know if you have any thoughts on that alertness, that watchfulness that comes with Advent. Well, I, I think alertness at the moment, oh, I'm so sick of being watchful uh, for COVID all the time. Uh, all that hands, face, space, hands, face, space. We've had it drilled into us quite rightly. Um, and there's a lot of fear um, around that kind of watchfulness. You know, it's out there, we can't see it. Everything um, feels like it's closing in. Um, and if you read through some of those passages about the second coming, you can get quite anxious. Um, you know, it's all about destruction and things perishing and, and, and boom, um, and it, you know, the end of the world stuff. Um, but you need to, if you read beyond those, particularly in, in um, Peter's second letter, you get to ideas of a new heaven and a new earth. And that's not new as in, we're gonna get rid of everything old. It's, it's refashioned and repurposed and remade. So I wonder whether this year of all years, that watchfulness is about looking for how God is reshaping the world, uh, that God's still involved, that God still loves it and loves us and finding those little shafts of light uh, that come to us in our own lives, wherever um, they may be. And I think that's something about the watchfulness of the spirit, actually seeing our own lives and seeing what God is doing with them. Does that make sense? No, yeah, that does completely make sense. And I, I think for me, that's where the, the theme of sort of light and dark that runs throughout Advent has that sort of resonance as well, doesn't it? That, that actually in the, darkness we lose our sense of vision 
the light brings a focus and an awareness and sort of directs our attention. And I think we, we are looking for that ultimate fulfillment of God's plan of salvation. Um, and I have to, one of the things that struck me, and this is a slight digression, um, but when you're thinking about being overwhelmed, as I suspect many of us have been this year with all the stuff that's going on, actually to have one source of light that you focus on, mm. I think is perhaps the sort of watchfulness that's speaking to me at the moment, that sense that, um, yes, God's light does still shine in the darkness. And, and if we watch for it, that sense of, um, as you say, spiritual awareness, uh, we, will, we will find ourselves reassured. Absolutely. I mean, some of the place, some of those places that I would have looked to for light have been taken away from me. <laughs> um, so I'm, uh, I, I'm heavily involved in art galleries. I, I uh, run a, um, a kind of discussion group at Museum Sheffield, which helps people look at art and use that as a springboard to talk about theology and life and faith and everything else. That's not happening because uh, we're in tier three and everything is everything is shut. Um, so I had to find other places, I think, to, to find that kind of singular focus that I would have by sitting in front of a painting. Uh, and, and I found it in some strange places. So I, um, Sheffield's a city full of murals, full of street art. So I found myself purposely walking where I knew there would be street art and murals. So, so it's, it's like the, the rather than the sort of um, the, the institutional atmosphere of the gallery, I had to go out onto the margins. And I think for some of us, that's been what's happened with our, our faith as well. We've, we've gone to the marginal places and watched and looked there. I mean, the shepherds were marginal people. They watched and looked and saw up in the sky and it was they saw the light of the angels, you know. So I've, I've started watching in strange places. <laughs> um, nature's another one. Um, I don't think I've ever been so aware of the seasons as I have been this year. And just ever so slightly subtle changes that have gone through uh, and how that speak to my spirituality and, and spoken to my soul as well. Um, and photography, um, I got given a, a, a camera. My, my father-in-law died right at the beginning of the March lockdown, not, not with COVID, but with, uh, with heart trouble. And it was a very difficult time because we couldn't, you know, couldn't organise the funeral in the way that we wanted and everything else. Um, and my mother-in-law gave me a uh, Gave me his camera which is a very very good camera the rest of the family all already have very good cameras so i've been walking around sheffield and the peak district with this camera um and just stop it, may, it makes you watch and look differently it brings in the idea of a lens doesn't it what lens yes. do we see things through and again a bit like that that sort of the light in the darkness actually it gives you that small aperture that does direct your attention when we were um I was preaching on Sunday, we had the, um, we have this strange thing in the Anglican church where we have the Sundays and Advents have themes, which is not the strange thing, but we have the prophets on week two, and then we have John the Baptist on week three, but the gospel in week two is also John the Baptist, just to confuse everybody. <laughs> um, but it is that sense of um, that person who directs your attention again, who, who gives you something to focus on, who points to the one who is to come. Mm. and reminds us of that importance sorry that was about six things thrown into that last <laughs> thing but I think what happens when you talk to good friends isn't it all the, all the ideas come flooding out but um but yeah I love the idea of, of of the camera being something that helps you and I think a lot of people will find that even just with their phones I think a lot of mm. people are using those uh tools to help them focus and think on what they're seeing yeah, I mean, there, there is the danger, I guess, that we, with, with um, particularly with photography, that we, we, we can turn, <laughs> we can be a bit selfie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, and with watchfulness as well, it, 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 um, you, you can be so singular focused that the thing that's over here, you, you don't think, you don't notice. Um, and and so, so every so often I have to question my, my, my singular focus. Is it the right one? Um, is is it where God's directing me, or is it where, where uh, frankly, I'm just using it to shut everything else out? Uh, and, and that's a that's a constant challenge, I think, Christians that we live with, because we can't see it all all at once. <laughs> only God can do that. We can't. We and only get one. Why, 
don't you? It's an endless series of distractions. So what's a distraction and what's our singular focus is, is a constant, yeah, it's just a constant thing that we have to have that question in our head all the time. Yes, and that I suppose is part of the, the, the self-reflection of Advent is that sort of re aligning of ourselves with, mm. with with God's vision and again I love it um, I love the way Paula Gooder talks about the sort of swirl of time through Advent that we, we look back to the voices at the start of our faith and the prophets that then point forward to the coming of Christ and then we look forward with with Mary and Joseph to the birth of Christ in a in a, in a smaller way and then we all look forward to as you were saying that new creation the sort of fulfillment of God's salvation in a new heaven and a new earth yes I think that helps me work out whether um it's a distraction or whether it's my new singular focus is is it about that new heaven and new earth it's a if if it is then yes I should give my attention to it I should notice it I should watch it I should you know give my give myself up to it if it's not then maybe that's something that, that we need to let go of. I, I think quite a healthy eschatology, a quite a healthy sort of view of the end times actually does help us live now. Uh, it's not about, um, well, God's going to blow it all up anyway, so the now doesn't matter. It's if you have a very, uh, that God is, is breaking in and will fully break in one day. And, and again, to come back to that, that, those passages from Peter, that we want to speed its coming, then we watch in, in a quite an active way. It means that we do get involved with justice issues. Uh, we do see what God's working over there in the lives of, of those people. I want to join in with that and be part of that. And it, it's seizing those glimpses that come to us, isn't it? But not, as you say, not rushing after every single one in a hectic manner, but using that, that inner watchfulness to, to check in and say, mm. is this what God wants? Is this just something that appeals to me is that just the new bright shiny thing that's caught my attention yeah. or is this actually of of god is that one image that speaks to you i mean sorry that's a re really hard <laughs> thing to ask anybody that's like what's your favorite book or what's your favorite film i'm sure oh. there's a million um or mm. one form of <gasps> of image or Ooh, of what would advent be and what would it be what would Oh, there's so many images that have become my friends in in uh, the museums in Sheffield because I, I work with them and I sit with them and I talk about them uh, so often. Um, oh gosh, what would I do? What would I do? I think what um, what you're Gwen, Gwen, uh, Gwen John would be one of the people that would be okay. up there for me. Um, and there's a tiny little painting in uh, Graves Art Gallery of a corner of a room uh, and it's just a chair and a table and it's obviously a, a Parisian garret high up in, 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 the, in the building block uh, and there's again there's light coming through and it's probably painted after a rather tempestuous affair with Rodin that kind of left Gwen John quite broken up in bits um, and she's trying I think desperately to find a focus again through creating this image. So by focusing on that corner of the room, she's also trying to sort of focus in herself yeah. um, and find herself again. Um, and it's it's a very quiet image. And she goes on um, in her career to paint nuns, um, quite a lot of Carmelite nuns in Paris. And it's something of, it's almost something of the monastic cell about this one corner of her little room and, and trying to find that stillness again after, you know, being rather badly treated, really. Um, so, yeah, I think that would that would be one of my images, I think. Thank you. And I think that's a really <laughs> helpful thing to draw our conversation to a close, actually, because it leaves us with that sense of actually perhaps we all in our watching this advent need to both be aware for where God is working, but also be aware of what gives us that focus and that stillness that allows us to then act in a, in a rejuvenated way in the world. But actually sometimes it is the drawing in um, that, that can help to focus us, to use another watching term, as we then go back out. So thank you. 
Um, it's just been an absolute pleasure catching up with you. And I hope that at some point in the future, we might be able to lure you down to Leighton Buzzard as, a, Definitely. In, as an actual human being rather than a disembodied <laughs> head. Um, but, uh, but thank you, Suzanne, for speaking to us about watching in Advent. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, everyone.